Hey everybody, welcome to Graybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you 10 fun facts about Kansas. Number 1. Kansas has an average of 96 tornadoes per year, ranking second only to the much larger Texas. Tornado season generally takes place between mid to late April and the middle of June, and oddly specifically on May 22nd or 23rd. Since 1950, there have been 160 tornadoes between those two days alone. Kansas lies within Tornado Alley, an area of the United States that tends to be a hot spot of tornado activity. Since records have been kept, Kansas has had 17 F5 tornadoes, the third highest in the United States, following Texas with 20 and Oklahoma with a whopping 55. Number 2 Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, a.k.a. Cassandra Peterson, was born in Manhattan. Football Hall of Fame running back Barry Sanders was born in Wichita. United States Senator and former presidential candidate Bob Dole was born in Russell. Buster Keaton, famed silent-era comedian, was born in Piqua. And Emma Kelly, one of the best-known and famous clowns in the United States during the 30s and 40s, was born in Sedan. Number 3. Amelia Earhart was born and raised in Atchison. She was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean, and for her effort she was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross from Vice President Charles Curtis. Amelia also set the record for women's altitude, women's speed, and she was the first person to fly solo from Honolulu, Hawaii to Oakland, California and she was the first woman to make a solo round trip of the United States, famously and quite tragically on her historic flight to circumnavigate the globe. She and her navigator Fred Noonan disappeared over the Pacific Ocean on July second, nineteen thirty seven, and to this day they have never been found. Before we go any further, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. And thank you to all our new and current subscribers. We really appreciate your support. Thank you. Number 4. If you couldn't guess it by the state's nickname, the Sunflower State, the state's quarter, and the state flag, the wild sunflower is Kansas's state flower. Wild sunflowers bloom during the summer months, but cultivated sunflowers, massive in size, can be seen from mid-August to early October. Not only are they a major agricultural crop for the state, producing high-quality vegetable oil and the seeds are rich in protein, they also attract tourists from near and far. The flower heads turn and face the sun throughout the day, tracking the sun's movement, thus the name. Number 5 Dodge City, the famed frontier town along the Santa Fe Trail, once had the reputation of being the most wicked town of the Old West. Founded nearby Fort Dodge and started as a single sod house, this town grew quickly as it was a convenient stop for cowboys, gamblers, buffalo hunters, and soldiers. The railroad that soon ran through the town brought much business to the town. Saloons and dance halls and gambling dens were a dime a dozen and things got pretty rowdy. Famous lawmen who were called in to bring some civility to the town were Bat Masterson, Wyatt Earp, and later Earp's friend Doc Holliday. Number 6. Wichita is where Pizza Hut, known and loved throughout the world, got its start. In 1958, two brothers borrowed $600 from their mother to start the pizza shop on the campus of Wichita State University. On opening night, they gave pizza to their customers for free, a great strategy since everyone loves free food. And once people got a taste, they just couldn't get enough. Today, there are nearly 18,000 Pizza Hut locations throughout the world. Number 7. Barton County, established in 1867, was named in honor of the famous volunteer Civil War nurse Clara Barton, founder of the American Red Cross. Although she had no formal training, she had experience in medical care, as she devoted herself to caring for her brother, who had suffered a head injury after a bad fall. Not only did she learn the proper way to give him his medication, and how to bleed him with leeches, she also learned the value of companionship and compassion for the sick and wounded. 
as the civil war started she was one of the first to aid in soldiers care whether tending to their wounds providing clothing and bedding or just being a companion and reading to them or writing letters home for them she even received permission to accompany the union soldiers to the different battles and was often the first medical attendant to arrive there were a few instances where she herself almost became a victim of the war although she was not a resident of kansas she played a significant role in american history and the provision of aid and necessities to those in need number eight civil war veteran s p dinsmore became a sculptor in his later years after settling in lucas he built his family a cabin home constructed from limestone which was quarried then cut and dovetailed much as a log cabin would be he then began work on the sculpture garden he named the garden of eden here he used over a hundred tons of cement as a medium to bring both his religious and political views to life number nine rock city park near minneapolis showcases around two hundred huge sandstone boulders some of the rocks dotting the landscape are as big as twenty-seven feet in diameter and nowhere else in the world will you see as many that are as big in size as they are here guests are encouraged to explore learn and even play on the mass of boulders these giant rocks are about a hundred million years in the making as ancient waters receded sand was left behind and over millions of years the sandstone formed and erosion from rain floods and wind helped shape them into the massive spherical boulders we see today Number 10. The city of Argonia elected the first female mayor in the United States. Dora Salter was elected to office in 1887. She was active in the local Women's Christian Temperance Union and Prohibition Party, and became acquainted with famed temperance activist Carrie Nation. Her election was a surprise as her name was placed on the ballot by a group of men who meant to humiliate and discourage women from becoming involved in politics guess that strategy backfired mrs salter lived to the ripe old age of one hundred and one in closing we hope you enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on graybeard's jewels